2022 Mazda MX-5 soft top convertible. Today we're gonna to dive into why this is one of my favorite vehicles of all time. Not doing a traditional review today, instead I'll be answering your questions since I've been reviewing this car so much in the past two or three years. We're gonna answer your questions, what you wanna know about the MX-5. If you're new to the channel, my name's Kirk. I talk about Japanese and Korean cars. Subscribe if you enjoy that content and let's get into it. I can't help but do a walk around before I get into your questions to start driving this car because from the outside, I just am completely enamored by the MX-5. Not only is it small and cute looking, but it is aggressive. You have the hard lines on the hood, the squinty headlights. You still have that iconic Miata smile at the bottom, but it's got a little attitude to it. Now, this doesn't have the Recaro package on it. You would have to get a club model for that where it gives you extra ground effects. But even then, with this vehicle, the way it is, and like kind of like in the stock form, it looks really good. Eight spoke, 17 inch wheels. They haven't really changed this vehicle much since the introduction of this fourth generation Miata. And of course, I'm keeping the top down for this entire review that is the true nature of the mx5 miata on the back we have the sky active g badge we have 181 horsepower under the hood the two liter four cylinder the 151 pound feet of torque uh, i wish we had a quad tip but <laughs> dual tip exhaust quad tip wouldn't do as much good we just have one bank of cylinders right i guess one small thing that they could do kind of like in lieu of a porsche is move it move those tips right into the center to line up with the mazda badge but other than that the mx5 is it's a head turner it's a beautiful vehicle it always has been this fourth generation is the best looking in my opinion but i do kind of miss those pop-up headlights of the first generation but that's about it let's go ahead and get into your questions love the fact we have a traditional handbrake in here too bad it's on the opposite side i wish it was a little bit closer to my side my thigh but that's just a small gripe quick zero to 60 in the mx5 we're going to rev drop at about 2500 rpm and go <laughs> it's not the fastest car but there are very few cars that can make you smile like the mx5 and it said zero to 60 in 7.28 seconds i don't think that was right we'll do another one later we'll definitely get faster than seven and a quarter essentially but one of the cool things about the mx5 since it doesn't weigh anything if you want to commute in it you can get like 35 to 40 miles per gallon pretty easily unless you're at you know interstate speeds if you're going over 70 75 your fuel economy is going to be probably in the low 30s at that point now one of the things i noticed right away in this mx5 is that there's no rev hang in the gli that i drove a couple months ago the s the honda civic si's that i've been driving uh, and even the corolla uh, XSE hatchback that I drove with a 6B manual, they all have noticeable rev hang. You don't have any of that garbage going on here in the MX-5 and it's just a pure raw experience. I'm going to start uh, auto rev, I don't have auto rev matching, I'm going to start downshifting uh, and auto rev matching I guess manually, not manual rev matching, <laughs> gosh words. So it is uh, more engaging in that way. I wish it was still an option in this vehicle to have manual or auto rev matching, um, but why not just give it hell again and then we'll get into your questions after I just uh, give it the beans. <laughs> I love that second gear burnout. Now last week I drove another convertible, a hundred plus thousand dollar convertible, the Lexus LC500 and that vehicle is like the perfection of the convertible this is more of an engaging sports car that happens to be a convertible we're going to take a trash control off this time do a little zero to 60 no one's behind me we'll rev to about 2500 three you can go <laughs> okay not the smoothest launch as you guys heard all that wheel spin um but zero to 60 and essentially seven flat 7.03 will talk entertainment wants to know why has a Maz ever offered like a track package for this vehicle well it's probably because they wouldn't make enough money off of it the take rate would be very very slim there's also plenty aftermarket support out there that they probably don't need to waste money offering a factory version if you want to tune this car there's 
so many options in the aftermarket that they probably just don't even want to mess with it. Mazda Speed MX-5, the, yes, there, there was one in the second generation. And since Mazda's completely walked away from Mazda Speed, we're not gonna have like a track version of this car anytime soon from the manufacturer. In fact, I don't think it's ever going to happen. Scuderia is asking from Instagram, how does this uh, handle compared to the GR86 and the BRZ? Well, I haven't driven the new BRZ, but it's virtually the same as the new GR86, right? Tuned a little bit different. This does have kinetic uh, posture control, which I'm just gonna throw it in in front of this Nissan truck. Or was that a Kia? And <laughs> that was the first time I've pushed this car in the turns and there is less body roll. So yes, they've incorporated the move it bird. Gosh, I almost killed that bird. Anyways, the brakes are great in here as they are in every MX-5. But the dynamic, sorry, kinetic posture control does make a difference. And I was, I'm surprised I'm saying that because I didn't think that adding some you know, ABS, well, it's, it's essentially affecting the brakes while you're turning to make sure the vehicle's holding true as best as possible. And I didn't think it would make a difference, but it actually does. And does it handle as well as a GR86, the new one? Probably still not quite, but it's really close now. I remember driving the GR86 shortly after I drove last year's MX-5 without the posture control, and there was a nine day difference. The, the 21s have a lot of body roll. It's a little bit sloppy when you push it to its limits, but I'm just gonna do a U-turn here. Dig out of third gear. There's no torque here. I should have been in second, but we'll just let it rev out. It definitely does better with body roll. You still feel it. 8.6 still feels more planted, but they're both excellent handling vehicles and you can't go wrong with either of them it just depends on what your needs are even as Mackie sorry if I'm butchering your name you want to know what makes this car so special with its clutch with its shifter well it's it's almost perfect um, so I mentioned earlier in the review that there's no rev hang so the car wants you to shift as fast as you're physically able to shift um, and we'll just get into it right here <laughs> like in in the Civic Si and the upcoming Integra, we're gonna have that rev hang. Hopefully, we don't have it in the GR Corolla coming out later this year. I don't think I don't think we will because I don't think there is any in the GR Yaris. But there is a little bit of rev hang, if I remember correctly, uh, in the old BRZ and 86, and they've reduced it in the new one, but I still don't think it's quite as nailed down as it is in this vehicle. You can just so easily get to the next gear, like it's begging you to fly into the next gear with this gearbox. The shifter's great quality, it feels perfect in my hand while my elbow perfectly rests on the arm. Like the ergonomics are perfect in this vehicle for a driving enthusiast. And if, if I want to downshift, like, it just does it so easily. And it probably helps that it doesn't have a ton of power or torque. So you can, you don't have to be like absolutely perfect. You're not destroying the clutch by not getting perfect rev matches. But even though this doesn't have auto rev matching I mentioned earlier, it's still really easy to do and so satisfying. And while the gear selector and the spacing and the short throws are perfect, like I mentioned, <laughs> the clutch here, excellent. I've never had an issue starting this vehicle out. The Civic Si, for example, is, is not an easy car to, to launch. And, and I'm not talking about zero to 60 launch. I'm just talking about keeping up with traffic. You have no issues. It's buttery smooth here, very easy to launch. Not quite as easy, easy as for, or as forgiving as the Corolla manual was, but the Corolla manual also didn't really have a lot of feedback either. To me, this is the perfect clutch feel and, and friction zone where I like it to be made it with like the perfect gearbox as well. So next question. Blockbuster wants to know about seat comfort. And in this Grand Touring, it has the Napa leather. I feel it's very comfortable. I'm about 190, six foot one. I have plenty of leg room. I do feel like I'm sitting up too high and there's nothing I can do to lower the seat, I don't think. 
Um, and I know that there are aftermarket things you can do to this vehicle to lower the seat. I just can't. I just feel like I am sitting up high, like my eyes are at the very top of the windshield almost. I'm gonna pull over, let these guys go past me, getting hard into the brakes, and this thing is just so satisfying to break. Now, it doesn't have like that, that Recaro Brembo package, but I mean, it's not really necessary because it, it breaks so well, but let's just do a quick zero to 60 here. About... <laughs> <laughs> Always that second gear chirp. There's 60. Okay, okay, tires are warming up. You know that it's still not perfect pavement by any means. And that was uh, 6.67. So I didn't rev it as high either that time. It was about 2,500 instead of 3,000 that I've been creeping it up to. So that 6.67 wasn't any more fun than the seven and a quarter that I did earlier. It's they're all fun launches in this vehicle. You're always going to have that second gear chirp of the rear wheels. It's just so satisfying. Blackguard has a bunch of questions. I answered a few of them already, but one of them is talking about the suspension comfort and it is a little bit on the firmer side out here on the highway. It feels awfully comfortable to me. But in the city where there's, you know, imperfect roads, you're gonna feel it definitely. It is a firm ride and you have pretty skinny tires. That's not gonna help you either. <laughs> this car is never going to not leave a smile on your face after driving it, but next question. PH McGee is asking about waterproofing and it, can it handle thunderstorms when the top is up? Well, I haven't tested it in this vehicle. It's not technically rainy season. It might rain later today, but I can't really comment it on it. But in my NA Miata, it was actually pretty good and that had old as hell weather stripping. I had like one small leak and that only happened like on the heaviest of Florida thunderstorms, which are much heavier than just about anywhere else in the world. So yeah, the waterproofing, Mazda knows how to do it. If they didn't at this point in time, this vehicle wouldn't be that successful. I don't expect you to have any issues when it comes to the, a leaky roof or anything like that. Tom K is asking, is it worth getting this vehicle if you have a lot more highways than curvy roads? And absolutely, I live in Florida. I can drop the top and enjoy the, the nice weather all the time. Um, but also it's just so fun accelerating this vehicle and also trying to get those perfect rev mat matches is a perfect instance here. <laughs> uh, the second gear wasn't perfect. Second gear, second gear is a little bit harder to rev match because you're coming to a stop. And I'm, I'm not like a heel tower. I tried it on this vehicle a little bit. Uh, the spacing doesn't feel right to me. So uh, I just been, you know, brake, get off the brake, blip the throttle, and it's been working really well. Godspeed wants to know, where does this rank on my sports cars to own? Until I drive the GR Corolla, this is number one. Like this vehicle, well, and, and I'm biased because I used to own an NA Miata and I just had a wonderful ownership experience with that vehicle. It had tons of miles on it. I beat the hell out of it and it just kept going and it just always brought a smile to my face. This vehicle just feels like a newer version of it. It still has that same soul. And so this car is still number one on my list. If I lived up north and you had to deal with winters, maybe not, but in a, in a location like this where <laughs> <laughs> you can just pull away, act a bit hooligan, and there's 60. Like, you max out this car to its limits on a regular basis. It makes you so happy, and you're not breaking the speed limit or putting yourself or others at risk or in danger. Like, it's just a, a pure pleasure machine. Now, I will say a vehicle has come close recently, and that is the Elantra N. The Elantra N was an absolutely joy-inducing experience. If you haven't watched my impressions on track and on road with that vehicle, please do so. But that vehicle is pretty close to this vehicle in terms of how much happiness. If I only had, uh, if I had a choice of just having one vehicle, it would probably be like a Civic Si or Elantra N because you have a back row, you have a usable trunk. And in this vehicle, it'd be harder to daily 
uh, because your trunk's tiny and your front seat here is essentially your real trunk, assuming you don't have a passenger in it. So yeah, the Elantra N is just an amazing, amazing vehicle. And that would be an easier livable experience. And even the GR86 would be a more easier experience, but that vehicle doesn't bring me as much happiness as the Elantra N did or, uh, or the MX-5. Chillin' in DC wants to know how this fits into Mazda's lineup when it comes to sales. Well, they sell a little over like 10,000 a year of this thing. And Mazda in total sells over 330,000. So it's like 3% of its total volume sales. That's why you don't see that many MX-5s on a row. Does that mean it's at jeopardy of being canceled? Absolutely not. Its sales numbers are strong when you compare it to previous year's sales. So like the MX-5, a niche product, Mazda has no plans to ever get rid of this vehicle. It's a part of their DNA. It's a part of who they are. Without the MX-5 on the market, the entire auto industry would be losing like a good friend. So it's not gonna go anywhere. It's a perfect formula for a small, affordable, reliable roadster that is, the fun level is a 10 out of 10. You can modify it as well, still have even more fun. Uh, you can stock this and take it to the track and it would be an excellent experience. Gotta, gotta do those manual rev, rev matching here. Second gear, ah, I gotta put a little bit more throttle into second gear, but the other ones are just so easy. But yeah, signing out from the MX-5 convertible, it looks sick, it drives great, the manual's perfection and it's just a, a slice of automotive perfection on the market that I hope never goes away. And if everything else goes electric, if the MX-5 stays manual transmission and naturally aspirated, the world will still be a better place because of it. But I gotta cut it off. Thank you so much for watching. Signing out from my favorite sports car. Peace out.